Don't delude yourself. How am I deluding myself? You're deluding yourself about the court. In the writings which preface the law, it says about this delusion, before the law stands a doorkeeper. A man from the country comes up to this doorkeeper and begs for admission to the law. But the doorkeeper tells him that he cannot grant him admission now. The man ponders this and then asks if he will be allowed to enter later. Possibly, the doorkeeper says, but not now. Since the door leading to the law is standing open, as always, and the doorkeeper steps to one side, the man looks through the door. And seeing this, the doorkeeper laughs and says, if it attracts you so much, go on and try to get in without my permission. But you must realize that I am powerful. I am only the lowest doorkeeper. At every hall, there is another doorkeeper, each one more powerful than the last. Even I cannot bear to look at the third one. The man from the country had not expected difficulties like this, for he thinks surely the law is meant to be accessible to everyone, always. But when he looks more closely at the doorkeeper in his fur coat with his great sharp nose and his long, thin, black tartar beard, he decides it is better to wait until he receives permission to enter. The doorkeeper gives him a stool and allows him to sit down to one side of the door. And there he sits. Day after day, year after year. During all these long years, the man watches the doorkeeper almost continuously. He forgets the other doorkeepers. This first one seems to be the only obstacle between him and admission to the law. During the first years, he curses his ill luck aloud. But later, when he gets old, he only grumbles to himself. He becomes childish. And since he has been scrutinizing the doorkeeper so closely for years that he can identify even the fleas in the doorkeeper's fur collar, he begs these fleas to help him to change the doorkeeper's mind. But in the end, his eyes grow dim. And he can no longer tell whether it is really getting darker around him, or whether it is just his eyes deceiving him. But then he glimpses in the darkness radiance glowing inextinguishably from the door of the law. He isn't going to live much longer now. Before he dies, all his experiences during the whole period of waiting merge in his head into one single question. She has not yet asked the door yet. As he can no longer raise his stiffening body, he beckons the doorkeeper over. The doorkeeper has to bend down low to him, for the difference in size between them has changed very much to the man's disadvantage. What is it you want to know now, then? asks the doorkeeper. You are insatiable. All men are intent on the law, says the man. But why is it that in all these many years, no one other than myself has asked to enter through this door? The doorkeeper realizes that the man is nearing his end and that his hearing is fading. 
and in order to make himself heard, he bellows at him. No one else could gain admittance through this door because this door was intended only for you. I shall now go and shut it. The doorkeeper deceived the man. Don't be too hasty. It's obvious. The doorkeeper didn't tell the man the truth until it was too late. He wasn't asked the question until then. And remember, he was only a doorkeeper. But he had power. And he used it to destroy the man. He's a criminal. He should have been dismissed. You've missed the point. The scripture is unaltered. Aren't we near the main entrance? No, we're a long way away. Why? You want to go now? Yes, of course I want to go. I have to go. I'm a senior clerk at a bank. They're expecting me. I only came here to show a business associate from abroad around the cathedral. Well then, go. I don't think I can find my way alone in the dark. Just keep to the wall on your left. Keep right along that wall. You'll come to a door.